All right, we're back with you. Let's take a look at how the grain markets are doing here on a Monday morning. Now that we have uh, about 45 minutes under our belt in the trading session, let's take a look at this corn market first. The quotes are provided by Bar Chart, and we're still higher on the day, but uh, kind of getting a little weaker as we go. March corn now only three quarters of a cent higher at 647 per bushel. So we've eased back a couple of pennies off of our earlier high. Now, we had a report that we had sold a couple of boatloads of soybeans to China, and soybeans are a little firmer here today. January up eight and three quarters at 1447 and a quarter. The March contract up eight cents at 1454 and a half, and that would be about three and a half cents from its earlier high from last night. But the wheat market couldn't hang on to the overnight gains, and it, it turned around after the open this morning. In Chicago, you have March down eight and three quarters. We're now at 752 and a quarter. Meanwhile, in the Kansas City market here today, you have March down seven and a quarter at 863 and a half. That's 14 cents off of its overnight high. And meanwhile, in the spring wheat trade in Minneapolis, it turned lower and March is down a penny and a half at 919 and three quarters. So that's off of its overnight high by about a nickel. We have Chris Swift in the studio here this morning. He's with Swift Trading based in uh, Nashville and actually kind of on the outskirts of Nashville. I understand <laughs> you're bit, kind of yeah. moving around to new headquarters. But anyway, good to have Chris uh, with us here this morning as we get things underway. So it seems like kind of a slow go in the grain market here. Soybeans have a little bit of momentum behind them, but... Is this just going to be kind of a choppy ride here for about three weeks now? I think so. Getting into the holiday season, we saw some changes last week. We saw the Mississippi River levels rise enough to be able to float some more barges. We saw the uh, railroad strike averted, so we don't have those issues. We've noticed some basis changes where the basis has softened considerably. And, you know, we haven't seen a lot of farmers selling this uh, fall during the harvest, so you might actually see some farmers selling now that prices are kind of inching a little bit lower instead of going higher as they have been most through uh, harvest. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's bring up the, the corn table mm -hmm. here, and, and I wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. that. And I, I mentioned it on my radio show this morning on uh, Commodity Wrap kickoff here. We had, uh, if you look at the March, I mean, we're at 646. You look at May, 647. Mm -hmm. July, 644. I mean, that doesn't really show a lot of carry in the market there. No, <laughs> are, are they what, What's but going it, on? Well, it's changing, though, because we, we're going from an inverted carry to a carry charge market, and that's probably what we're going to see going forward is do we build some carry in the back end? And we saw uh, red December, uh, December of next year's corn uh, drop below $6. We thought that was pretty significant that, you know, now we've got next year's corn trading back under $6. Well, there it is right there. It's uh, down a penny and a quarter right now. And it's at 596 and three quarters. Still a good price, in your opinion, or not? I, I think so. I think you know when we look at the changes in the weather, and we see more uh, moisture coming back in, and, and some analysts have begun to say that the uh, La Nina will convert to an El Nino by the spring of this year, bringing in more moisture. So I think we have to um, look at a different change of plans here. You know, you know, before we were looking for a little bit higher grain trade because the drought had not been broken. Now we have aspects of the drought being broken, so we have to plan accordingly for that. All right, so if that's the case, let's look at November 23 soybeans. They're just kind of holding steady here. 1378 is now the last price. Mm -hmm. There again, uh, we were talking about that earlier in the broadcast. I mean, you're looking at prospects of record production in South America. Absolutely. Even though Argentina is dry. But do you think 1378 will look pretty good a month or two from now? They, they very well could. And especially that's about a 70 cent discount to the spot months where we're trading right now. And so, yeah, that's, that's not going to be a bad price. Anything above $13 a bushel and then considering basis on there, that's, uh, that's not going to be bad at all. So how do you lock in something like that that far out? Well, you would either go to your elevator or your mill, wherever you, you generally market your inventory to. I, I might stay away a little bit from put options on it just because of the time frame that you would have to be paying for them, and there's still a considerable amount of time to go by before the crop's even in the ground. So I, I think I'd talk with my miller, talk with my grain elevator, and see what they've got to say and see what kind of basis that they're offering. All right. Uh, let me uh, – well, I was going to see if I could bring up a 24 – chart. Uh, didn't have time to do it, but maybe we can uh, bring it up next segment. Anyway, we're talking with Chris Swift. We're going to come back in just a moment and we'll take a look at the livestock side of the equation as well as some of the outside stuff too, right after this. All right, we were talking with Chris Swift of Swift Trading a moment ago about uh, these 
Soybean prices and corn prices for a new crop of this year hasn't even been planted in the U.S. yet, but um, they might have some opportunities. And I, I found that 24, November yep. 24 soybean chart. We can bring that up here, I believe, and, and take a look at it here. There it is. 13.23 and three quarters. Yeah. Still not too shabby, right? No, no it's really not. That's a year. Uh, that's two crops out from now. And that's something even with enough time and because of the price, you might want to consider an option trade on that because you wouldn't really want to book it because that far out and so many different variations could happen. But, you know, at the $10 level, you might be able to buy some options there in case if it were eight, that looked pretty good. Try this on for size. November of uh, 25 soybeans, 1266 and yeah. a half. That's three crops from that. <laughs> and you can still lock in 1266. I. I just want to point this out. I, I'm not saying go sell, go hedge <laughs> your crop three years out from now, but I mean, I'm just saying. Chris yeah. and I were talking. I remember some of the best bean prices I ever got were under $9. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's amazing. You can lock it in for three years. You're really showing your age, aren't oh, you? I know, I know. <laughs> yes, I really am. All right, let's check out our live cattle trade right now. Let's see what's going on. Uh, nothing, actually. February unchanged at 155.87. April. It's the biggest mover to the upside, and it's only up a nickel. The deferreds are 20 lower. Uh, let's check out feeder cattle this morning. Well, we have the January up a dollar to March is 82 higher at 186.10. On the lean hog market in the early going today, we have the February 32 higher at 90.75. So it's not necessarily you know great shakes today, but. Uh, feeders hanging in there okay, lean hogs hanging in there okay, mm -hmm. cattle don't know what to do. What's no. going on? Well, in the feeder market, it's probably the moisture. As we see the moisture come in, we're, we're under the impression that we have seen a elevated cow slaughter, elevated heifer slaughter, and that's made up a lot of our beef production where we've been short and fed cattle supplies. Now we move into the first of the year and we have moisture coming in. That might give some inclination to hold those cows back, and especially if it's going to get really good, they may hold some heifers back along with that, and that should expose some of the shortages that we have in the fed cattle market. All right, longer term now, uh, as we get through the holidays, I mean, I'm surprised at how strong the cash cattle market has been here lately. But can they continue to do that? I mean, we're pretty close to contract highs on the futures. I, I think they can. I really? think I think with the supply issues that we have on hand and boxes have just kind of fluttered back and forth between 250, 249, and 260. So as long as there's not a crash in there, and we're probably going to see fewer cattle on feed going forward for quite a few months in a row. And uh, Although a lot will hinge on the cow slaughter to that, but if or when that cow slaughter slows, I think it's going to expose some real shortages. All right. When you look at lean hogs, there's a lot of question marks about Chinese demand. But, uh, you know, it looked like the party was over here about a week ago or so on the chart, and now it's rebounded back pretty lofty levels again. So is that something to take advantage of? Well, if we look at that $90 level, it's poked through it a couple of times but hadn't been able to stay through it. It would be real interesting if it starts to trade above that and hold it. All right. Also, the uh, crude oil trade here this morning. Right now, West Texas Intermediate Crude, uh, it is up $1.13. We're now uh, showing a price of eighty-one eleven on that January contract. So it's uh, still holding pretty firm here so far today. All right, well, Chris, good to have you come in. Thank always you very much. Always a pleasure. Much. Yes, sir. Yeah, always a treat to get to talk to you. Chris Swift of Swift Trading with us here from the uh, Nashville studios. Tammy, with that, I'll turn it back to you.